Hey Synergy users, today we're going to be going over our new practice bullpen session. So previously we've had batting practice, simulation game, and training and workout. So today we're introducing our bullpen sessions, which I know all of our pitching coaches are very excited about, myself included. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. We want to be within our team logger as usual, and then we're going to be in that practice session on the left. From here, it's as simple as adding a practice, and then now you'll have the bullpen option on the drop-down menu. So once we select that, we're going to change our league to the proper league for the team that you are working with, and then we're going to select the team name. From here, I'm going to keep it really simple, and we're just going to select pitcher one, two, and three to keep it generic. And then you can also select your catcher in this as well. And we're going to click apply to make sure that everything saves. Today, when we're going to do this, we're going to look at it like we are logging live within the bullpen while the pitcher's actually throwing. So we won't import the video first. Instead, we'll go right into our log screen. And I want to go over what this looks like since it is brand new. So we have our strike zone here. And then we also have in this setup an intended pitch zone. So if you're working with your pitchers and let's say we're working low and in or low and arm side that day, you have that selection that you can choose. And once we click that, everything will be highlighted in gray. So that way you know exactly what's space you're working in. So it could just be in the zone as well. Once we actually get the video pulled up, I'm just going to be working with in the zone today because the videos of younger pitchers, they're just working fastballs, but you can get as in depth with this as you would like. On the farther right, you'll also see that we have a pitch zone execution option. So that means once we select our location, wherever it may be, we can also click once to choose it was a successful pitch, or we can click that same location twice to say that it was a missed spot. So you have the ability to be able to show your pitchers how often they're hitting their attended pitch zone and how often they're successful with their specific pitches. Um, if you wanted to get less specific when you're doing this, you can also not choose an intended pitch zone. So let's say that day you're just working movement. You want to see what someone's pitch naturally looks like when they're not really going for a location, you could just select your pitch type and then you could put your location in there without an intended pitch zone. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this when we have our pitcher throwing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my video that I'm going to use for this today. And as I said before, this is of younger pitchers, so we're not going to get super in depth, but we will go ahead and use the intended pitch zone so that you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over so that it's easier to see. And then I will bring up my logging screen again. So I'll go ahead and press play. And then what I'm going to do is mark pitch release as the pitcher releases here. And then I'd add in my information. So I'm not going to add in any information for that one because we went kind of fast. But I'll go pitch release there, fastball, we were working in the zone, and we missed here. So if I click twice, I'm going to see that my X pops up for my miss. And then I'm going to go right back to tagging along. So obviously, depending on the pitcher, this may be easy to do, or if they work very fast, that may feel like a lot. So if that's the case, you can always go back and add more information later on. And we'll talk about how to do that in just a bit but I'm gonna keep going until she is done with her session. So that was her last pitch. Again, fastball, we're trying to go in the zone. That one was a success. She hit the spot. And then now you can see I have another pitcher popping up. So I'm gonna do next pitcher on this button on the right, and then we'll keep going just as we were before. And then she's working on the same thing. So fastball, we were trying to get in the zone, but we missed low and in. So I'm going to select Miss. You can also select the buttons for this over there. And then we'll do this for about three more pitches, always going at pitch release. And then you can go in any order. Let's say for you forget to click intended zone. That's okay. We'll give her a little bit of a wider strike zone since she is a younger pitcher. So, um, a little high there. A miss. Remember, you can also add your velocity down at the bottom as well. So you do have that option. And then we'll use this as our last pitch of the session. Okay. So that one also a miss out of the zone. We'll go fastball. We're trying to go in the zone. And then I'm going to 
go ahead and pause the video and make our log screen a little bit bigger. So again, you have some options with this. You can choose your intended zone. You can choose your pitch execution, whether it's a success or a miss by selecting the options over here. You can also use, if you see these letters, that's our hotkeys on our keyboard. So if that is a better workflow for you that goes a little bit faster, you can use your keyboard as well. And then I also wanted to show you guys one more feature. So let's say our pitcher through another pitch. So we have a blank screen here. And let's say in that situation, we wanted to get very specific with the location. So instead of a generic down and arm side or something like that, let's say I just want to hit this small corner right here on an O2 pitch. So I'm going to right click using my mouse. And now you can see that small gray area is selected. So now I know my pitcher was just going for that small spot and I'm going to left click the actual location. If she hit it there, great, that would be a success. If we were over here, all right, that would be a miss. And then after I'm done with my session, I'm just going to click apply so that everything saves. And then now, if I had previously added in or imported my video, I would see a one or however many angles you added in in the capture, and we could have been logging off of that. But since I didn't add my video, I'm gonna go back go to my import section, and then I want to name the angle and then add my video files. So I'll go ahead and add the file we were using. I'll start that process, and then I'm gonna go over to my sync screen in the top right. And then now, this is a very important step. We want to make sure that we're actually syncing everything at pitch release since that was what we were working with prior to. The reason that's important, in our client app when you are viewing this, so we'll go to pitch release, remember you can also use your frame by frame. So I'm gonna work back to here. We'll just go a little bit before pitch release and then I'm going to sync events to get everything lined up. I'll just make sure everything Looks good. That one was a little early. So I think we actually went based off of the second pitch. So I'm going to unsync events. So this is a nice thing. You can always make adjustments with this if you mess it up the first time. So we'll go to pitch two. I'll pause it at pitch release frame by frame. I'll go back one more. Sync events. And now I'll check it this time. Perfect. So now we're lined up for the most part at pitch release. And as I was saying before, this is important because when we go to view this in the client app, what you're gonna see is three seconds prior to pitch release. So it's gonna automatically do that in the client app for you. So that, that way you can see the pitcher's pre-motion and you're seeing her full pitch that she's thrown or his full pitch that he's thrown if we're in the baseball setting. Once I'm happy with the layout of everything, I'm going to click apply. And then now everything will be saved within our app. We'll be able to view it on the client app within that practice session that we typically view in.